Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tammy Ernest and I am a long arm quilter. And here on my channel, I like to share customer finishes as well as my own personal projects. Um, today though, we're gonna do a sewing room tour. So we have lived in this house um, for 23 years and 13 of those years I have run uh, my own sewing studio out of an upstairs bedroom. So we're gonna head up the stairs and I will show you um, how I get it all done and how I pack it all into that small room. So come join me. Right, my sewing studio actually starts outside of the actual room. Here at the top of the stairs, I have an old dresser, and this is where I keep all of my cross stitch supplies. So um, inside the drawers are, the top drawer just has some unfinished, they're finished pictures that I need to now frame or do something with. But then on down, it's just full of um, all my cross stitch stuff. So here on the top, uh, this is an old picture that my, uh, my oldest daughter actually did um, freehand some embroidery and um, that has been up there a very long time and this, after she finished this part, then my father actually made this frame out of some old barn wood. So this is a, um, a cherished piece in our family, we really enjoy that. Here on top also I keep, this is um, actual quilt that my grandmother made when I was a baby and um, I have kept that here just as heritage and uh, just a lot of pretty stuff old spools in the jar and here's um, a pillow I showed a couple uh, on my floss tube channel so just a lot of fun things and keep all my cross stitch things out here because there's not room for them in the room here and then also out here in the hallway is where I store all of my yardage. So this, uh, our upstairs is a converted attic, so it has the uh, sloped ceilings, which means it has knee walls, uh, if you're familiar with that. So this space here was an empty space um, underneath the eaves of the house. And so my son and husband, um, sons, I guess, um, cut this out a while back and built the shelves for me and then this is where I store all of my yardage. So we've got an old barn door on the front of it. Love that. Um, on the track. And then um, up here at the top I keep some old sewing machines. These aren't ones that I use. These are just ones that I have found over the years and really uh, I, just, I just love the look of them so that's why I keep them. This one's pretty rusty but I think that uh, just shows some some character there. All right, so here in my yardage, I you can obviously see that I store it by color mainly, um, but I, how I store these is on the um, the comic book uh, cardboard pieces that uh, I think I showed a couple videos ago. So um, this is I used to store all of this in a drawer, and I like being able to see everything out in the open. So if you're familiar with the comic book. Um, cardboard pieces you can buy these on Amazon and I fold my yardage you know I'll lay it all out and fold it so it fits just underneath the the edges of this and then I just roll the, the yardage onto that this is probably this one's probably a yard um, and you can kind of tell by the size of the piece that there's more or less on here this is all of this fabric is something that's either a yard up to about three yards any more than that I store in another spot that I'll show you in just a tad bit. Um, but I really enjoy keeping it like this. I can see everything when I need to audition a fabric. I just come up here and uh, come out here and look through the colors that I, I need for that. So really fun there. All right, so let's go on into the sewing room. All right, so obviously the largest um, piece of furniture in my sewing studio is my long arm. And this is um, a handy quilter. This is an Amaro, um, which is a 20 inch throat space. That means there's 20 inches between the bars here. And uh, I'm on a 12 foot table. So I have been up here in this sewing studio um, for about 13 years. And I first had um, a hand guided machine 
and it was on a 10 foot table. And so I had a little bit more room, um, but as I was starting to do more and more quilts and doing bigger quilts, I decided to go to the 12 foot table. I sold that original machine just um, back in 2020 and I bought this digitized. This has pro stitcher on it, it's not on right now. Um, that's why it's kind of moving on me, but um, but this is the largest part of my sewing room. So I have it so that I can move this all the way to the back and it doesn't bump the walls back there at all. So that's why it's pulled out from the wall a little bit. But uh, that's how you can see that's the largest part of my sewing space here. Okay, so when you first walk into my sewing room, over here on the left-hand wall, uh, first of all, this is how I store all of my uh, cross-stitch um, threads that I don't have kitted up into um, into a project bag. So these are ones when I'm first starting a new project I can come see if I have the right colors or I um, when I'm finished with a project I will put these back on the ring. So I sort them by the, the uh, brand that they are. Here's all Weeks Dye Works on a ring, uh, classic color works, DMC's here, some gentle arts and uh, I just like seeing the pretty colors there. Back behind my long arm, that's another old sewing machine. Again, I don't use this. This is just for decoration that I like and some old sewing spools. All of my, not all of my reproduction fabric, but a lot of it is back there in that, uh, that long basket there. Um, like seeing those things out. And then behind the long arm, uh, let me move the machine a little bit here. <coughs> I just like to keep things pretty here in my sewing room. So the back there, the wooden part back there is actually an old uh, sewing frame, one that um, the hand quilters of many days ago would have set up and um, would have sat around and stitched on. And I have placed uh, an old grandmother's flower garden quilt just draped between the poles there so that I can look at something pretty when I'm doing my long arming. And then up here on the wall, this um, brown quilt here with the cross stitch pictures, this was my very first quilt. And so that right there is a, uh, more than 35 years old because that's when my first son was born. I did all the cross stitching pictures and then that quilt is just tied. But I like to keep that up there just as a, a memory. The old bar, the old browns of the 19 late 1980s, you recognize that. <laughs> and then uh, this next red piece here is something, this is just hand guided work that I did on uh, my other machine and I just leave that up there as inspiration. I don't do a lot of hand guided work anymore um, just because the digital is faster and, um, and I, I just so many more designs, but I like to keep that up there just as a remembrance of what I've done in the past. And then all across the top, these are uh, Nancy Halverson, her monthly flags. And um, many years ago, I did this as a um, monthly subscription to um, to non quilters that just wanted these for their homes. I would send, I would make the flags and send them to them each month. That was uh, a fun project, so I like to keep mine up as inspiration as well. And then this is an old quilt uh, I've made this several years ago and um, just like the spools. Actually, I've seen, I'm working on some other spool quilts here for 2023. One of my favorite parts is I actually put my name on the sewing machine. I thought that was kind of fun. <laughs> All right, so let's, let me give you a peek underneath um, the long arm right now. I've got a quilt on here. This is one I'll be working on later today. I loaded it all up last night so that it would be ready to stitch out today. But underneath my long arm, I keep a lot of storage. So down here, these are all client uh, quilts that have come in that I um, will be stitching on soon. That's Most people, when they give a quilt to me, it's in a bag like that. I do have some hung up as well, but uh, most people give them to me that way. So that's how I store them, and I just work from left to right through them. I keep a lot of... Um, just other projects and notions and things in uh, the drawers down here. This is just projects that I'm working on. Um, my quilt ID book and other books that I reference or 
I uh, like to look at. These are some other UFO projects that I have going on. And then down here in these bins, these are actually cross-stitch projects that are already kitted up and uh, ready to be pulled out when I finish some of my others. So it is lots of fun. Can't wait to start on some of those. This is actually my mending pile <laughs> um, that I need to work on for some of my boys. But And then also underneath and, my lawn, um, this piece here, this is just a, a bookcase. Actually, it's two bookcases stacked on top of each other, laying sideways, sideways, sideways. These are just can be picked up at Walmart. They're not anything very expensive. But uh, this is where I store all of my books. So um, my Kim Deal, all my Lori Holt. I have some um, of the Primitive Quilts project books. Over here I have all my quilt samplers. If you follow, if you get those uh, magazines at all, these I've got them for years. This is the, the magazine that comes out twice a year where they show you um, quilt stores around the country. They'll do 10 or 11 quilt stores around the country. Comes out in fall and in spring each year, and I keep these. Anytime we're traveling or going somewhere, I like to look through and see if there's a quilt store around that I can visit, but I keep all those. And then all my quilts and more magazines. Now, other magazines that I get, I will keep for a while, um, and that's what's down here, but then I will go through the pack. I will go through and I will take out the quilts that I might actually do, and then I'll store those in three ring binders. So I don't keep all the, the uh, magazines that I have, I do keep all my quilt sampler and all my quilts and more, but others I'll go through and only pull out the projects that I'm actually going to work on. So then also down here, um, this is how I like to store, I, I like these old baskets, they're not old, these are actually Hobby Lobby baskets, um, and I, I just like the look of these old locker type baskets. This is storing uh, just fabric that comes from Crimson Tate, and then I have um, put this back real quick. So that's my Crimson Tate fabric. This is some Lori Holt fabric left over from the uh, quilt along I did last year. And when I'm working on other Lori Holt projects where I don't want to buy new fabric, this is what I'll pull from. I have some baby fabric that's waiting to be made into some quilts and just some other fabric down there. All right, then on around, oh, you have to see this. This is the uh, new quilt along for Calico Garden. This is the, um, the tin I'll be, uh, the enamel pan that I'll be holding all of my um, fabrics for that and I'm anxious to get started on that. Then this bin down here, this is all scraps that after I've finished a project um, and that these are too small to be put into my fat quarter bins. They're not enough to be put on the, the comic board. So I will cut these into pieces and store them in another part, but right now they're just waiting to be cut. I don't do that right at the time. I wait till this basket is full, which it obviously is now, and I'll spend some, you know, like a Saturday afternoon and cut those all up into strips, and I'll show you where I put those after um, I cut them. All right, so that's everything that's underneath my long arm. Here at the end of my long arm is where I store my red snappers. These are just in a tub down there at the bottom. Um, and I drop them in there. These are what I use to load the quilt top, and we talked about that a couple weeks ago. They're kind of big and bulky, so I wanted to show how I store them, just because if you're a long arm quilter, they can be um, kind of a mess to keep track of. So I just have an old magazine bin down there that I keep them all in so that they're very handy. And then um, the larger ones just rest against the poles, and I can pull them out easily when I'm ready to load a quilt. Here next to my window, this is, um, oh, I don't remember, is this a Moda or whoever put this out, I can't remember, but this is the long canvas uh, yard stick that they did, and I just love this, so I, I use it as my, um, my yay board, my inspiration board, it has some pictures of quilts I've finished, other um, designers that I enjoy, just some old uh, school cards, and just lots of fun stuff that I like to Kind of like a bulletin board, but I just pin them on there. This is my view out, <laughs> out my sewing room window. So I'm at the top of the stairs, like I said, and this is overlooking our backyard and out into our fields. We live on 27 acres out in rural Indiana. So what I enjoy about being at the top of the stairs is I can still hear everything that's going on downstairs. 
I can hear everything that's going on upstairs. I can see out into the backyard. So if the kids, especially when they were young, if they were playing outside, I could keep an ear out, I could see them. Um, so I, even though I'm up here, I feel like I still uh, am among things. I can still have a feel on what's going on. That's important to me as a mom of seven. I had to know what the kids were doing, and uh, but still get my own work done too. All right, so how about we just move over to this part. Let me switch sides here. Again, just a lot of storage. Being in a small um, room, I try to um, decorate with the things that I'm using. So, um, of course, <laughs> these are old boggle pieces. I like to use them as, uh, as words. I love to put words up on things. So just some patterns that are up here um, that I just want to, I just use them as decoration just so that they're, uh, they're close to me all the time. Uh, some wool pieces over here, my bobbin winder. I like to use old canning jars as much as I can. So these are, um, and this one is, uh, I use pre-wound bobbins. So these are the middle of those bobbins, and once I get enough, I can send those back to the, to the company. I have old buttons in this one. These are selvages, my tape measures for when I'm measuring the quilt. Um, another enamel tray. And then down here is where I keep all of my, um, my works in progress. <clears throat> so I've mentioned these on some others. This is one I'm not working on at the time. But. So I've talked to you before about how I keep all of my projects in these enamel tins. So this is the Osei Can You Sew Quilt Along that I'm working on. Then um, I have reproduction fabrics that I've been working on recently in this one here. I think this is just some interfacing, yeah. But I love this box <laughs> with the lid on it is a lot of fun. Let me pull out some of these others. So here in this one is the uh, threadbare pattern that I'll be working on soon. Got those all in that one. And then I've been working on uh, Quilty Fun and I keep all of my progress in here. So I just keep each project in its own tin. I like this one again because it has the lid and I can close it up. But this way all of my current works in progress are close at hand when I'm ready to sew on something. Um, or like, yeah, they're all just different projects that I'm working on at the time. I just keep them stored right there so that I have easy access to them. And I have just learned over the years that I'm a visual person, that if I keep things where I can see it, I'm more apt to work on it. If I hide it away in another drawer, I forget about it and don't come back to it for a while. So I try to keep it neat and tidy as much as I can, um, but still have it in, in eyesight where I can work on them. All right, then over here in the corner, this is my cutting table. And this was just um, a homemade jobby as well. So this bookcase right here is one that comes from Walmart as well. And then I have it stabilized against the wall over here. And then this is just a large um, plywood piece that I've made. Um, let me pull these off first. It's just a large plywood piece that I put batting on. I did put um, the ironing fabric underneath it and then I covered it with this uh, yardage. That way I can use this as an ironing table as well. This, and I normally keep just this uh, cutting board on top. I do have another cutting board that I can put on that actually covers the entire top if I'm doing something uh, really big or uh, I'm cutting a lot of pieces at once that I can cover the entire top and use the whole thing But normally I'm just using this one now the thing about using this as an ironing surface and a cutting surface is If the ironing surface is hot do not put your cutting board on top of it because it will warp it that, that heat from that So I make sure that um, if I'm doing some big ironing on here that it cools down completely before I put my cutting mat back on top of it I've been working on um, a test pattern for uh, From Bolt to Beauty. This is a paper piecing pattern, and you can see some of my blocks there. That's what I've been working on. So up here on my tabletop, first of all, I have all of my rulers over here. I don't know. This piece right here, 
I really don't know where I got it, but it works great for just keeping my rulers just um, at an angle right here so I can look through which ones I need. Uh, very handy, right there to the left. I keep all of my rotary cutters back here. Just odds and ends in this basket back here. Pencils, some glue, some scissors, some small rulers, um, two and a half inch rulers or straight rulers. Just some small stuff. Up here, this is another, I like to use antique type things <laughs> or just salvage type things. I think they're pretty, I think they, um, remind me of the history of those who have gone before me. So I've talked about this on another video, but this is just an enamel thing that I picked up at an antique store. And as I'm cutting small pieces, I just put the scraps into this bowl. Obviously you can tell that it's full. And then once it's full, I will dump it into a larger pickle jar and then I keep that for the entire year and I just have a history of layers of all the different quilts that I have worked on throughout the year. So I need to um, bring a pickle jar up here and fill that and dump this out. I have an old um, antique iron rest. Again, just <laughs> no, uh, no sewing value to it, but it's just pretty for me. I enjoy that. These are all the pieces that I have cut from these blocks. So these are the scraps uh, from after paper piecing this. These are the scraps. And these are sitting here because what I will do now, these will either go into my scrap bin down on the floor, or if I feel so led, I will go ahead and let me grab my ruler. And I will go ahead and see what size I can cut out of them. So this little piece right here, I can get a one and a half inch square out of. That's the largest I can get out of that one. So I will save this little one and a half inch square. The rest of this goes in the trash. That's all I can do. Now, these little one inch pieces I can save. I'll show you where I put those in a minute. Like this black one here. Um, again, the largest one piece that I can get is a one and a half inch square. So I will cut that like that. These pieces go in the trash and this one uh, goes in my tin across the room here in a minute. So that's why those are all stacked up there. They're just scraps that need to be cut. Now, let me show you underneath my ironing table how I store my scraps. Table here are uh, some of these locker baskets again. And this is where I store different sizes of scraps. So this first one is all one and a half inch. So most of these are strips. Um, there are a few that are actually cut into squares, but most of these are strips. So if I'm finishing a project, and I have a little bit of yardage left over. Um, so let me pull this out of my scrap bin. So this is a little bit that was cut off of something that I finished. I think this was a backing that I finished. Um, if there's enough here, what I can do is cut it into a one and a half inch strip. Actually, I could get two inches out of this, so I would probably cut it two inches. But I just take the scraps that I have, if it's a long piece like this, I can cut it into strips and then I just store it in these in these bins. So I have one and a half, I have a two inch bin, then down here is a two and a half inch bin. You can see it's kind of overflowing. I have the three and a half inch bin. Down at the very bottom I have a five inch bin. Now some of these are in strips, um, some of them are actually already cut into five inch squares. So then I just pull those when I'm working on a certain project. Usually a scrappy project is when I'll use those. And then this last bin is, again, Lori Holt fabric um, that I'm using for that Quilty Fun project that I'm working on. Those are some flea market fabrics. So I just keep all of uh, my Lori Holt fabrics separate from the rest of my, my um, scraps because I, I want to use those together. And then, all right, you also notice tucked in here beside these are my clappers. Because I'm doing a lot of ironing on this table and also a small one next to it, I keep my clappers just tucked in right here beside it. I have three of the large ones and then just one of the small ones, but they're very handy right here underneath my ironing board so that um, when I'm working on ironing, I can just pull these out and press with them these also work very well if I've been ironing on the big table and I want to cool down the big table quickly. Uh, obviously the cutting board wouldn't be there, but I can lay these on 
the cutting tape on the uh, ironing board and it will cool down the ironing table really quick. So I can just move them around and it will cool down that surface very quickly so then I can get back to cutting. But I just store these right here so that I can reach them very quickly. All right, this little, t this is just a little cart, um, plastic cart, and it has three drawers on the front. This is what I keep, um, again, current projects in. Things that I want to work on this year are in this one that I haven't started yet. Once I start them, they would actually go in enamel pans over on the bookcase. Just, uh, this is the Bliss Quilt Along. I only pull this out once a month because uh, it comes once a month in the Sew Sampler box. So that's housed in that drawer. And then the bottom drawer is just, actually it's orphan blocks that um, didn't get used for some project that I'm gonna save those and, and put them together. But what I use this table for is it tucks away when I'm not using it. When I'm sitting at the sewing machine, I pull this table, this little cart out and I plug my iron in. I do use vintage iron and I plug my iron in and sitting on top here is a rotating cutting mat. Now this is an older one so it's pretty worn at this point so I don't use it so much for cutting. I may use it for trimming if I was trimming like uh, two and a half inch squares or something where I'm using this part. I just need the cutting surface but I don't actually need the measurements on there. I will do some quick cutting on here if I'm sitting at the sewing machine and I just need to cut a whole bunch of half square triangles, let's say, or something like that. What I use this mostly for is I have another, um, <laughs> this is another ironing board. This side has really worn out and I haven't um, staple gun this one, this new fabric onto it. Again, this is just a plywood board and I covered it in batting and then I covered it in the ironing fabric. You can actually see it peeking through. And then I covered it over with some yardage. This one, obviously I used it a lot and it has worn itself out and I need to cover it again. I could take this fabric off and I might since it's kind of fraying there, um, but I'm ready to put this one on here and I just need to go find my staple gun and staple it all down so it looks a little neater. But then I set this on top of my rotating uh, cutting mat. And I have my iron here. And so when I am sitting at the tape at my sewing machine and I am working on a block, this is one of the um, paper pattern pieces that I'm working on for this uh, set to spin quilt. So let's say I needed to um, press this open. So while I'm sitting here at the sewing machine, I would press this open. I would press it here. I would use one of my clappers to hold it. And then I will spin this around and I can iron something else on this side. So it allows me, um, I, I like the rotating cutting mat because it allows me to have one thing cooling and I can be ironing the next thing and then I'll spin it around again. That one's cool. I can have it this one cooling now and then I can be working on this one. So don't throw your rotating cutting mats away. If, um, <clears throat> if they get worn out, it's kind of like a lazy Susan. <clears throat> Excuse me. It can be used for that. And it's nice too if you are trimming up blocks um, just to sit here at the sewing machine and just to spin it around, cut, spin it, cut, you know, that kind of thing. So I keep this right here next. It tucks away when I'm not sewing so that I have some more room out here in the open. But when I'm sitting at the sewing machine, then I pull it out so that it's uh, um, right there next to me. Underneath the back side of my cutting table is where I keep bolts of fabric. So I have, um, I have them lined up here, tucked away underneath there, but so I can still see them. There are some on the other side as well. These are ones that I've bought a whole um, bolt for some reason. Um, a lot of times black or backings that I'm using. Um, wide backings sometimes I'll buy in a bolt and keep there, but that's how I store those underneath my uh, cutting table. So next is my actual sewing space. And so I'm working on a Bernina. This is um, a very old Bernina. I actually bought it from my mother when she was upgrading to a new one, but it works well for me. I do have it sitting on 
an old sewing machine. This sewing machine actually belonged to my husband's grandmother. Um, the machine is still on the inside and I have not used it, um, but I like to at least sew, have my machine on top of the table and just enjoy um, the aesthetic of an old uh, sewing cabinet there, or the, the old treadle machine. I just have my pedal sitting on top of the treadle and, um, and I keep my notions in the um, drawers on the sides, so my bobbins, you know, your cutting things, just normal stuff there. Back behind my machine, again, I like to decorate with um, old sewing things. So this is actually one of, this is an old drawer, um, an old sewing drawer that came off of some other sewing machine, you know, very similar to this one, but I've turned it sideways and then just have these uh, metal brackets. I got these at, uh, off of Amazon that hold, um, they'll hold the drawer there, make it, you know, like a double layer shelf, but they have this little lip on the end so that the drawer doesn't come off of there at all. And I just like to decorate. I like it to look like a quilt store. I, I love going in quilt stores, so I love to decorate with my own fabric um, and make it look like a quilt store. So I have two of those drawers there, uh, just some extra fabric, an old uh, recipe box as well. All right, and here next to my sewing machine, um, I have just a bookcase here. And again, I like to decorate with old sewing machines. I love the color. This one is a green one. I think I just found that at a, um, a garage sale one time. And so just decorating with it there. These are bindings that I finished a binding on a quilt and I have, you know, 12, 24 inches left over and I wrap them up and just decorate with those. I will use them occasionally if I wanna do um, a scrappy binding then I can join different pieces together. My little sewing angel there, and um, just some other little small pieces. Now right here, I talked about earlier, showing how I cut those little one and a half inch squares from my scraps, and that this is where I will take those scraps and put them into, the, into my muffin tin. So I separate them by color. All my white ones go into this cup, and then that's what I sit here and use as my leaders and enders. So I have these little lunch trays underneath here. And so I'm just joining those white pieces with a colored piece. And then I use those as my leaders and enders and I end up with the checkerboard blocks. So this sits right here next to my sewing machine. I love these old lunch trays. I ate off lunch trays like those. And uh, those sit right here next to my sewing machine so I can just use those as I'm working on a project. I come over when I get to the end of a strip and then I come over and grab two of these and run them through, saving on thread but also working on a bonus project as well. Then also down here is, um, this is an old cheese box. I just got this for my birthday. Keep some pretty fabric in it but inside here are some of my long arm supplies. So this is a little screwdriver that I use to change needles in my long arm. This is some extra needles. And then these are, uh, they're the smallest red snappers. And what I do with these is when I'm first putting a quilt on the long arm, I will secure it in three spots, in the middle and on the two sides to hold it in place. And then I use the bigger red snappers to finish um, attaching it to the, the bars. But I keep those right here in a little box so that they're very handy. I can just reach over and grab them when I'm loading a quilt on the long arm. This right here is one of my favorite finds. This is an old like Taylor's um, darning ironing board. If, if, uh, the, I can't think of the name right now, but it's actual double. And um, if you can tell that. So here's the bigger part on the top. The bottom part, so you a, a tailor could turn this over and use either side, and I've just hung it on this, but on the side of this um, wooden file cabinet, and I've used it as a shelf, and I just think that's really cute. Again, just keeping some of my yardage and little toy iron. Isn't this cute? I just think that's adorable. Um, just to make it look pretty. And then also in here, in another cup, is where I keep my Wonder Clips. 
So when I'm working on a binding, I'm kind of down right now because I have a bunch of them on a quilt that I'm doing the binding for right now. So that just sits in on this little shelf right there. So I love to decorate with the fabric and buttons and things. Then this piece is a wooden um, file cabinet. And so again, I'd like to decorate on the top of it. Some yardage or some pre-cuts up here. These are the sewing pins that I use um, when I'm putting a quilt on the long arm. So I attach the backing fabric with the red snappers, but I uh, pin the quilt top onto the leader with these pins. And so those are long corsage pins and I keep them in a nice, um, just a fun little pumpkin up here. Then this little cabinet back here, I love this little thing. He's so cute. Just little tiny drawers and this is, I keep um, other size needles in that, for the long arm. Uh, just little gadgets, just make it look pretty. So all kinds of needles for my long arm. And uh, buttons in the little mason jar. This is a cast iron iron uh, with just a little meat, uh, needle minder stuck to the side of it. I just like to make it pretty. Then in the top drawer of this file cabinet is where I keep all my pre-wound bobbins for the long arm. So I have six different colors that I use pre-wound bobbins for and I again put them in um, canning jars and I can just reach in here and grab the color that I need. I also keep my um, spray starch, my canned air, some oil for my machine, brushes for cleaning my machine, um, a little vacuum, just all the little supplies that I would need for um, for my long arm, and that's in this top drawer. The second drawer is full of patterns, <laughs> quilting patterns that um, that I've kept over the years. Just that's all full of that, and the other two are just personal personal files. Right here, in between the wall and the bookcase, or in the file cabinet, is where I keep other. Um, cutting mats. So it's important to keep your cutting mats flat. So a lot of people will store them under a bed or something. I find that this is tight enough right here. It does keep them flat. So I have several different sizes, ones that I've worn out. I don't tend to throw them away, even if they're worn out, just because I'll find some use for them later. Or as soon as I get rid of them, then I would want them. So I just house those right there. They're not in the way at all. And uh, they keep nice and flat. So this room originally was my oldest son's bedroom and when he went away to college I first uh, left his bed set up on one side and I put my sewing stuff on the other side. He came home for Christmas that year, I moved all my sewing stuff out, gave him his room back, he went back to college. The spring semester I brought all my sewing stuff back up and set it up. When he came home for the summer I said, buddy, you're sleeping on that side, my sewing stuff's on this side. So, But when we first moved into this house, this was uh, an unfinished attic space. And so as we started having children, when we first moved to the house, we only had two children. We quickly added five more to that. So we have raised seven children in the house. And as we started adding more, we, our oldest son um, needed a bedroom of his own. So he finished this bedroom off. And when they uh, finished it off, he actually built in um, dr a dresser here. So he's got, he built in a small closet on this side and then the dresser over here. And so I use this for a, a more of my sewing storage. And the top here is just, you know, kind of your junk drawer type stuff, just extra stuff. Um, here is <laughs> this front drawer face has come off. So I just use it as more of a shelf now. But this right here in this drawer, is where I keep my fat quarter storage. And I showed this bin last week or week before when I was talking about how I'm using this bin to work on the uh, Sew Scrappy Spools quilt. Um, let me show you, on this. And so I keep these bins in here and this is the one that I've decided just to pull out and use for this project. But then I have another one back in here. This is all full of fat quarters too. So these are the fabrics that are kind of in between. Um, they're either fat quarters that I've bought, been given to me, or they're the end of a project where it's, it's too much yardage to cut into strips and to put into those baskets over there because I may need a bigger piece or something like that. So I will actually fold those up, put them in these bins. They're too small to actually put on the comic board, cardboard pieces. 
So they're kind of that in-between. They're not my scraps. They're not the bigger yardage, more fat quarter, maybe a half yard. <laughs> Just like. All right, so that's where I keep these kind of in-between yardage there, and they stay in those bins right there. The next drawer down are projects, more UFOs. So these are things that have, like I would say would be kitted up, but they need, I haven't started on them yet. Um, so this is a project I was going to make with all of the um, fruits and vegetables, kind of like a, a farmer's market. Um, things that I want to keep together because I have an idea of what I want to use them for. So I don't want to store them in my yardage out there. They're not quite a UFO or a work in progress because I haven't actually started on them. This is a Christmas kit that was given to me that I'll be working on soon. Um, just other projects like that, that things that I started years ago, or uh, I have an idea what I want to do. I want to make this quilt here so it's all kitted up, but I'm not ready to start on it. That's, what, that's what's in this drawer. All kinds of things like that. And actually, I think the next drawer <laughs> is the same as well. This is, uh, I am working on this quilt, but this wouldn't fit over there. This is a quilt that my daughter started on that she hasn't finished, and I know she's wanting to get back to that. So again, this just stores projects that I want to keep everything together. I don't want to use part of the fabric for something else. I want to keep it together as a project, but I'm not ready to start on it yet. So um, I need to shop my own drawers when I'm ready to, to work on something new. But the very bottom drawer, this is full of backing fabrics. So these are where I have, you know, a good four, five, six, seven, eight yards. And um, so when I need a backing, I'll come in here to see if I have something that I could use for that. And that's all, this is a big deep drawer. So it houses quite a bit of stuff. But bigger pieces of fabric that, um, for backings that I don't want to use for something else. All right, we're almost finished here. In the closet part, I have a couple old um, antique quilt tops that I have rescued and that I'm ready to put on the long arm. And so they're just hanging here until I get a chance to do that. And then next to that, I have um, batting storage. So the top here is all scrap batting that uh, has come off of a project and I will use these for personal quilts or for small quilts that I'm working on and I just store those. At the very bottom I have some packaged batting that I will use for client quilts. Um, I need to replenish that. I normally, at this point I've been buying packaged batting um, instead of a roll just because I don't have a lot of storage space but I may be changing that and buying it in a roll instead. But that's how I store that. So I have it all packed in here. Nice and tight. Um, not usually this tidy, but <laughs> but we did it for today. So if you have any questions, uh, anything that you saw that I didn't uh, talk about that you're interested in, or um, any links that you want to know where you can purchase those things, or you have it, just just questions if you are uh, interested in something that I've shown. If you are in need of long arm quilting services, then I would direct you over to my website, TammyErnestQuilting.com. And there you can download the instruction sheet and the, the order form, and it has all the instructions on how you can get your quilt to me. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing my, st my sewing studio today and how I accomplish um, all the work that I get done here from doing my long arming to my own personal projects to doing test um, patterns for other designers, and uh, it can be done. So thanks for joining me today, and I hope you have a great day.